another salvage story. The good, the bad, the ugly, you're gonna see it all. At the end, I'm gonna let you know how much money we made or lost. Today, we're working with a true legend. This isn't some stance out C6 Corvette. No, not at all. This is 3,700 pounds of true American muscle. Steve McQueen's personal chariot, essentially. A 2019 Ford Mustang GT Bullet. That's gonna give you all the knowledge you need, that hat. Oof. I can feel it, you know. <laughs> good hit. Yeah. You know, we got to grab the guy in the shop whose Instagram handle is S550 Eric. Come on outside. I got a cool one for you. Now, I know you're going to tell me everything I need to know in great detail about this bullet. It's got an intake manifold. I mean, it's got to be way more special than that, right? Like, uh, it's green. It is green. It's got the old school wheels. The brake calipers are a different color. So, wait, you're telling me this thing isn't really that special? Well, I mean, it makes 20 more horsepower. From the intake manifold, okay, right? I mean, 20 more horsepower, not bad. It's got this logo on the back. It's got to be worth at least a couple thousand dollars. I don't know. Oh, it does have the bullet steering wheel airbag. That is pretty cool. Green stitching there. That is slick, albeit the interior is kind of screwed up. Did you come up with your accident reconstruction why you have wood in your windshield and wheels? No, I, uh, and behind your front well, bumper over here. I have not got the, that far yet. See the hub back here? It's like in the lug nut. Oh, wow. In the hub. So this thing went, you know, full-blown off-roading, I guess. Wait, that's a tree. What? That's a straight up, oh, wait, wow. hold on, <laughs> no, what, what is that? That kind of looks like a pallet to me, like a pallet. Yeah, pallet. that it almost does. looks like it was there intentionally, though. Put your guesses in the comments on that because that looks somewhat intentional. That's not something that I think would happen during a wreck, but weird one. Oh, man, I got the bullet strut bar as well. I think this is gonna be a big money car, guys. Big money. Special air box. Is that like the GT350 intake? Now I feel like an idiot. I've been spelling bullet wrong the entire time. I've been spelling it like an actual yeah. bullet. I didn't realize they spelled it differently. <laughs> <laughs> so what else do we have special? Obviously the big one, the Brembo's. Bright red Brembo's, which you can get on other package cars like this, but generally when you see Brembo's, they're black on these. Unfortunately, still no Brembo's in the rear, but when we hop into the inside here, you notice something a little special, and if you've been paying attention to some of our other videos, a little valuable. The digital gauge cluster. I mean, it's just a high package car, like performance pack. I mean, it's got like a digital cluster. It's just a high option car with an intake manifold, paint job, wheels, badges. I have to admit, they look pretty cool though. I mean, Dalt, I know because of your color choices, you like this color. Oh, the color's great, yeah. Yeah, it, it is a good color, especially with the wheels, the black with the polished lip, it really works. Now we have seen a couple of these at auction. We've never bought one. They've always been way too much money. This one slid through. This one went pretty cheap because it's pretty jacked up. This one was definitely a parts car not really worth it to fix it we'll get into what we paid a little bit later first of all this is actually functional like, it is very functional right i'll tuck it off and now i'm hot the sun's in my eyes <laughs> need to get a couple more of those joints around here scrap life garage cowboy hats merch Whoa, yes that's, that's a sick idea i can't help but notice that seems to be missing an exhaust that is a little odd this side over here is actually in good shape but i think what's going to be more interesting on this car is getting underneath it. For as bad as this car looks on top, underneath, oh my God, this thing is clean. Look at that differential. This is one of the iron housing 373s and it is not rusty in the least. These iron housings definitely tend to rust. Not the case here. This thing looks almost new underneath. Wow. How many miles is it? Uh, we're gonna check that in just a second because oh. I can't recall off the top of my head. More importantly, you've seen the digital clusters, right? Yeah. These guys, We've not shown a digital cluster on this channel yet, so they're in for a treat for oh. sure. This car is about as high option as you can get, except Recaro's. If you look there, it has the electronic shocks, which comes only on the highest of highest option cars. Once again, just very, very clean. The majority of the damage on this car appears to be body-wise. Even the suspension, not really too bad. Whoever had it, albeit for a brief time, because it is a 2019, definitely took care of this thing right, and that is a plus for us. We can call these take care of it. Uh, I mean, if I suppose that's a good point. I'd argue that you could call this just using the car as it's meant to be used. Oh, okay. It's a Mustang. You do Mustang things, right? <laughs> Destroy it? <laughs> he said it, not me. I don't know, the, the more I stand out here and look at this car, the more I like it. It's actually a really cool looking car. I'll point this out later as well, but these modules right here, 100 bucks a pop. That's blind spot monitoring. Like I said earlier, this car, high, high option. You can tell by the... Let me walk to the other side. I was going to point out something on the mirror, but we have to go over here to this side. We're going to look through the forklift grill there. 
that light right there, only the super high option cars have that as well. So this car has everything you could ever want. Now this car is listed as running at Copart. There's no obvious damage why it shouldn't be running. As long as it has battery power, it should start right up. Oof, crunchy, crunchy. Now if you can't tell, it is a little cramped in here. The headliner is bashed down. All these bags blew here. The seats, they kind of sit right. So before we can even get this thing started, Fernando's looking them up for sale used. Obviously this has had some kind of effect. I don't know if it's the car, the hat, or what. You're just gonna go buy one and cruise around on that Why? sweet hat? No, 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 no. Give it the old shifter check, good to go. Man, she doesn't sound too bad with that missing exhaust. Sounds good. And there is that beautiful digital cluster. As you can see, 15,000 miles. So somebody definitely took care of it. You would expect a 15,000 mile car to be clean. Though, if you've been around here for a while, you know that is not always the case. Let me shut this door real quick. Why did that look on? Should I buy the other one? Oh yeah, did perfect. Gray on it? Definitely a Mustang guy at heart. The engine is nice and quiet, though you definitely can hear a little bit of that third gen direct injection tip. No big deal, very, very common. Now that she's got a little heat in the engine, you want to go ahead and rev her up, see how we sound? Ooh. Gotta get one from behind, right? Okay, why not? This is your custom single exit exhaust. I bet it still sounds phenomenal. Hit it! Well, if nothing else, it's loud. I think we pretty much know what we need to know here. It sounds like we're gonna have a good drivetrain, though you guys know it's never over till it's over. We gotta leak it down. As is usual in these domestic cars, the entire profitability of this whole project depends on that. Go ahead and shut her down, Fernando. That is the last time this engine is ever gonna see life in this chassis. Hopefully this thing ends up in somebody else's awesome project, a resto mod, whatever, and gets a second half of life that is absolutely glorious. Also, let's hope that second half lasts a little bit longer than the first half. And as you can see, Tyler has made very short work of this interior. The dash here is pretty much the last piece. There's not a whole lot left to see in there. All the good stuff is already out. We have that beautiful digital cluster. We have the special airbag over there. We have the steering wheel here, which has the buttons for the digital cluster. So that in itself is very desirable. A couple more pieces, these green stitched knee pads, the green stitched console there, they're gonna pull big money. But we'll go over all that stuff once Fernando's photoing it and once I'm listing it. In the meantime, I have a question for you guys. Now we're going from a special edition Mustang to a Mustang with something special on it. Sounds similar, very different. I don't know that this is very subtle. There's not a lot of mystery going on These here. Are actual carbon, Ooh, I think. carbon fiber. They're actual carbon too. I thought they were just overlays. Eh, are they? I don't know. They feel like they are. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure that out later. We got bigger fish to fry. Boom. Boom. That's right, we have a third gen 10R80 car with a Vortec blower on it. Now the question I have for you guys, I wasn't necessarily planning on doing a video on that car, but I bought that one shortly after I bought another supercharged V8. I'm kind of thinking about doing a dual versus salvage story. Two different platforms, both supercharged, both V8. We'll break them both down, see which one we make more money on, and maybe put this Coyote versus LS thing to bed once and for all. So if you wanna see it, let me know in the comments. You almost done with this Miata? Yes. Tyler said he's on your ass. He's got a bunch of Mustang parts for you. Okay. I don't think he's actually ready for me. He said know? he's almost ready. I'm still waiting for the car. This engine's about to come out right now. Tyler made super short work of this thing. It's not even lunchtime today, and this drivetrain is ready to come out. <laughs> Ten minutes, Fernando. Nope. These are just big, dumb motors. They sit really close to the frame rail. They're no LS.
so just as it looked underneath, this thing is just ridiculously clean. Once again, thanks to whoever was taking care of this car. Sorry it ended up with us, but I'm sure somebody's gonna put this engine to great use. So what's the verdict on the subframe? Was it actually damaged? Uh, it's hard to tell. It, it took a hit over here and broke a little bit of suspension, but yeah. This is a tough one. The frame to the naked eye looks straight, but obviously that doesn't tell the whole story. Thanks for joining the party, Eric. You said there's something special about that intake manifold right there. Give us the rundown. I don't know. Oh my God, <laughs> what? It makes 20 more horsepower. What? This is our resident Mustang expert. He's supposed to know these things. So is it bullet specific intake manifold? Or is it like- he's the right person to ask about it because he swapped his intake and blew out his engine, so. <laughs> What happened with that? What intake manifold did you put on yours? The 2018. Did that make 20 more horsepower? Should have. For how long? About a day. Okay, got it. <laughs> how does Bullet Mustang 20 more? GT350 intake manifold and bigger throttle body. That's what's on this? Yep. So you were right. It turns out Eric does know what he's talking about, I think. GT350R intake manifold and a bigger throttle body. Now you know what comes next. That's getting torn down, that's getting torn down. Engine's coming off the subframe, and then it's time for the leak down test. Door not latched over there. Uh, let me check. No, the door is not latched. <laughs> oh, it actually did. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Good work, Harrington. And that is the end of that legend. Just like every other salvage story, this is peak nervousness here. Cylinder number one. Absolute perfection. You quite literally cannot dream it up any better for a Coyote, especially because these engines are somewhat prone to getting carboned up having a cylinder that sticks at 10 or 12. Not the case whatsoever on this one. Gotta look at it one more time. That is what we love to see. Tyler, you leak these things down way more often than I do. What's the percentage of cars that come in here and have absolute perfection like that? It just doesn't happen, It's right? rare. I mean, this one has 15K on it, so. I mean, that and it looks like it was taken care of. The rear tires didn't necessarily look taken care of, well, but. Well, opened it up. Yeah, you know, there's what? no carbon in there. A burnout a day keeps the carbon away, something like that. He can definitely attest to this. We have had 10,000 mile cars, 5,000 mile cars that have came in here and have not leaked down nearly that well. Fortunately on this one, we have a combination of good mileage, somebody driving it the right way, if you want to call it that, and it just came in absolutely perfect. So it's like they like went through someone's deck. This was through the core support. So I saw that and it looked like really across. weird and intentional so or, or a fence that's got to be a fence right with the speculation here we have to put in an official guess Dalt, what's your guess fence is more practical i think so i'm thinking fence, fence. is more practical the deck idea sounds awesome it does but the fence idea i think makes the most sense i'll say more of a fence the more i think about it but yeah Okay. Deck, okay. deck boards would be thicker. I'm going very specific. They went through somebody's farm fence, which accounts for the black piece. It's in a rural area. They ran off the road, hit a couple trees, played ping pong off those, and then eventually ended up through a fence. That's my guess. Put yours in the comments. We got all of our parts laid out. This is going to be the first thing he's going to sell, I guarantee I mean, you. it is pretty sick. It's all going to really depend on what they're available for new, but somebody is definitely buying that thing. What are the chances it ends up on a non-bullet and somebody's trying to, you know, fake it? It's going to happen. Somebody's, I guarantee you it's going to happen. Somebody's going to spray bomb their car British Racing Green <laughs> and put that bullet on there. Just, Just go ahead and put the strut bar on. I feel like that's oh, a little more appropriate okay. to put on a non-bullet. Yeah. Because then you can say you have a bullet piece on your car, but you're not really trying to act like you own one, right? Exactly. What, what they, about the interior? That's the one thing they should be putting on their yeah, car. Yeah. Honestly, they've heard us talk way too much about the green stitching on this car in this video, but it is The whole center console stuff, yeah. 
I want like a white car or a black car. It would look so good. But now that I'm looking at it, this dash trim is actually a little different. You can actually see like small yeah. different Yeah, so they have the carbon stuff. pattern and then they have the brushed aluminum. This is something different. completely different. It looks yep. really cool. He's done so many of these at this point that it's kind of just business as usual, even though it's a special car. So let's get into it. That's clock. Why do you have a hat on? Because I'm working on a Mustang. Why do Mustang owners wear straw hats? Yeah. Why? That's a thing. Because if they flew off the road to do a curve, that hat would fly off. No, that's, that's why they wear these hats. So they, Look, so they, it stays. So the ambulance can identify who's driving when they pull up? Yeah, they, they keep their details, their insurance, yeah. and everything right over <laughs> here. Right. Got all our numbers figured out, let's get into it. First and foremost, as always, what do we pay for the car? Bid price, 12 4 We already know this, but even judging by the pictures, it's a pretty rough bullet. If I can recall, I believe it's the cheapest one that has ran, period. Shut up. Shut up. I knew what I was getting into and the price reflects it. All in all, after Copart got their cut, we paid thirteen three oh eight for the car. Now the $13,000 question, what did it produce for us? We got a pretty modest 65 parts for a total of $29,168.70. The 65 parts starts to make sense when you saw how damaged that car was. I think I said it multiple times in the video, there just wasn't a lot to come off that. Typically when it comes to the salvage industry, you want as many parts as possible. But the silver lining in having a nice easy car like this is that we make some of it up on the back end with less labor, less shipping. But we'll get into that in just a second. First, we'll go through some of the standout parts here. First up, the most important part on any Mustang, the drivetrain. Gen 3 Coyote, MT82 6-speed manual transmission only 15,000 miles, not to mention, as we learned earlier, the GT350R intake and throttle body. The manuals don't pull quite the money that the 10R80s do. If we get a 10R80 with less than 20,000 miles, it's going fast in a hurry for a lot of money. This one we listed for 12.2. As nice as that slightly upgraded intake and throttle body is, it doesn't do a whole lot to the price. Next up, the green stitch seats here. Obviously, the airbags are blown. That's a major hit to the price, but typically when people are putting these in a resto mod or something of the like, they don't really care about the airbags. They're going to cut them out, sew them back up, and go on their happy way. You've heard me talk about it plenty in this video, the digital cluster. This thing is going to sell probably immediately. I'd be surprised if it lasts a week. People buy these, code them, do whatever they need to do, package them into kits, and resell them. This is an easy $12.50 every time. Moving on, the cream of the crop for S550 differentials. The iron housing, which comes in the manual cars, and it's a 373. It's the best gearing with the strongest housing. Low miles, this one's easy 1100. Now the Brembo packages on these cars typically go for about 650. When they're coated red, it doesn't add a ton, but we can usually command another 100 bucks on them. Keeping up with the bullet specific stuff, this trunk. Now the bulk of this value is in the trunk panel. I've seen some of these sell alone for $400. This is something that we definitely could have split if we wanted to, but we decided to just leave it together and sell it as a complete unit. Maybe somebody has a rear-ended bullet or something like that that they really need this entire assembly for. Another nice bonus on the car was the GT350 style intake. These easily pulled double the price of a regular Mustang intake, so we put this one up for 300. A couple other bonuses when you have a digital cluster car, this dash panel here, which is very clearly required for the digital cluster cars, these go for almost $200. We have it up there for 180. If you can get 50 bucks for a non-digital cluster trim, you're doing well. Finishing off on another bullet specific part, this shift knob here. They're not a ton of money new, they're about 130 bucks. I've seen a couple used ones sell for 80, 90, 100 dollars, so I shot dead in the middle, 89, 98. Now it looks like we have a lot of cool stuff here. We have a decent total parts value, but you guys know that doesn't last long. Let's go ahead and break down the expenses. Before we get into the expense breakdown here, I'm going to take a second and ruin a surprise. Earlier in the video, you heard me tease another supercharged car coming in that I was going to compare to that supercharged Mustang. Well, it came in and I'm terrible at keeping secrets, so here we go. As is almost always the case here, it's a C6 Corvette. It is absolutely annihilated. However, it looks like a lot of the blower kit actually survived. 
I'm not going to get into the details on the car. We'll save that for the video if you guys want to see that. But we've already found some good and some definitely not so good with it. Now, onto our expenses on the bullet. The car had to be shipped up from Ocala, Florida. Shipping from Florida is actually pretty expensive right now. It cost us $750. For reference, we just had a car shipped from Dallas, Texas, which is roughly five, 600 miles further for $500. Next up, parts shipping. Being that the car produced so little, we're in this pretty light as far as that goes. We do still have a couple larger items. Obviously there's the drivetrain, the seats, the trunk, the fender, a door. When I was trying to come up with an estimate, I couldn't decide between 1,500 and two grand, so I shot dead in the center, 1,750. Next up, as always, labor. This was a cheap one, 500 bucks. Tyler knocked that car out in no time. Fernando photoed that stuff very easily. I listed the stuff very fast. This is definitely one of the lowest labor numbers ever on salvage stories. Keeping it rolling, selling fees, as always, 10%. That's credit card, eBay, PayPal fees, any costs associated with selling these parts local or otherwise. 10% puts us at 29.16. Technically it should have been 29.17, but now last up before we can say if this was a good car or not is dead inventory. This is stuff that we have to discount heavily to sell, takes forever to sell, or simply never sells. While Mustangs do have a little more of that kind of stuff than the GM products we typically deal with, fortunately a lot of that stuff is on the lower end of the price range. I found roughly 20 parts that might fit that bill. Fortunately, they're only about $1,500. Total. Now that we've taken all of that into account, that leaves us with a theoretical, of course, net margin of $8,444. Not too bad for a very roughed up bullet. Of course, that only takes into account the cost of things directly associated with this part out. Rent, utilities, all that good stuff, that's another story. Any way you slice it though, this is a pretty decent return on a fairly run of the mill car, even if it's a special edition. You guys probably already know what I'm gonna say. I'll take it when I can get it. If you've watched this far, you're obviously interested in the financials behind the salvage industry. So make sure you watch the rest of this playlist if you haven't already. There's a ton of cool stuff on there and there's even more to come. As always, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of that. Feedback, good, bad, anything in between, put it in the comments. I will see you guys next time. Guys, welcome back to another. Ooh. So it does, it does all <laughs> dirt in the eyes, damn. <laughs> the question I have, for, dude, the fucking sweat running down to my eyes. That's what's on this? Yep. So you were right. I was right, kinda. Eric, that's not the shot these guys want to see, I promise you. I fall off the road again, everything's under my hat, sir. And everybody got something to say about that. What do you have to say, dog? I was just listening to you morons talk, and there's I was no, hoping that you were recording this dumbass no content. It's still morons. recording unless yeah. it died. Mustang Corvette. Mustang, Mustang. Yeah, we're going Mustang.